This is DJI FPV Drone Review. A fun but flawed FPV drone for beginners. The DJI FPV is fun in capital letters, its first-person view provides an incredibly immersive flying experience thanks to the amazing DJI goggles, not to mention equally compelling video footage from the forward-facing camera. But it's not all plain sailing. With a real-world flight time of around 10 minutes, high cost when you factor in essential accessories and the difficulty in pulling off true FPV acrobatics, it's significantly more complex and niche than DJI's other drones. The DJI FPV is an intriguing new breed of drone. FPV, or first-person view, drones are fast, fun and offer the most immersive flying experience possible, thanks to the inclusion of video goggles that give you a bird's-eye view from the sky. The trouble is, they're usually custom or self-built and are not the easiest drones to fly, until now. Thanks to DJI, anyone with a fair amount of pocket money to spend can now experience the exciting world of FPV drones with the DJI FPV. It's a huge amount of fun to fly, but how long will the novelty last? And is it as compelling as other drones like the DJI Mavic series? While the DJI FPV comes pretty close to bringing the user-friendliness of the Mavic series to a new category of flying machine, it doesn't quite match their polish, convenience or value for money. It's certainly a neat, consumer-level FPV drone that's easy to fly in the normal mode and provides an accessible entry point for beginners. More experienced FPV pilots will also appreciate the ability to flex their skills and capture high-quality footage in manual mode. The DJI FPV is mainly aimed at shooting immersive FPV 4K video, and there's the ability to shoot still images at a basic level, but you certainly shouldn't buy this drone for that reason. The advantage of shooting video with an FPV drone is that you can achieve the exhilarating first-person view that almost makes the viewer feel like they're flying. The DJI FPV is capable of shooting 4K video up to 60fps, and can also shoot 1080p at 120fps, which for the most part looks great. But even with lens correction turned on, the camera still captures the front propellers in video and stills. Another negative is that the battery only lasts for around 10 minutes in real-world situations, so you have to shoot fast. The great thing about the DJI FPV is that it works out of the box as you'd expect. Just charge everything up, including the DJI FPV goggles V2, install the DJI Fly app, update the firmware, and you're ready to go. Combine this with the relative ease of flight in normal mode and the DJI FPV quickly becomes an enticing proposition. But unfortunately, it's not all good news. Not only does the drone come in at a high cost once you factor in all the additional accessories you'll need to get the best from the drone, more on that later, it's also much more limited compared to a standard drone in terms of both features and basic flying. One of the problems with flying the DJI FPV is that you'll be wearing FPV goggles. This means that as well as following all the relevant drone laws in your country, see the link below for more on that, You'll also need to have an observer standing next to you who can maintain visual line of sight of the drone while it's in the air. It's not the end of the world, but it does mean that when flying outdoors you can never do it alone, you'll always need to have someone with you acting as an observer. And that's symbolic of what is a fun, but ultimately niche, flying experience. You can buy the DJI FPV right now in a standard bundle, along with various optional accessories. The standard DJI FPV combo pack includes the drone, remote controller, DJI FPV goggles V2 and one battery for $1.299, £1.249, £2.099 Australian dollars. DJI is also offering a Fly More kit, although this one differs from its usual Fly More bundles. Rather than being a pricier bundle that includes the drone and some extra batteries, it simply lets you buy two extra batteries and a dedicated charging hub for £299, £259, £429 Australian dollars. There's also the optional motion controller, which steers the drone based on the movements of your hand, and which you can buy separately for $199, 139 pounds, 229 Australian dollars. In recent years, DJI's focus has been on its Mavic line of drones, which all feature a similar folding design. The DJI FPV is different. While it's a small drone, the motor arms are fixed and the upright body makes it appear much larger than it is. The main body sports a typical quadcopter design which, excluding the motor arms, is comparable in size to the DJI Mavic Air 2. Although with a takeoff weight of approximately 795 grams, the DJI FPV is only marginally lighter than the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. The DJI FPV isn't large or heavy, but that fixed design means that buying a bag or case specifically for the FPV, controllers and DJI goggles would be a good idea, since they don't fit into regular camera bags well at all. 
the DJI goggles carry more backpack is one option and costs $119, 109 pounds, 169 Australian dollars. But this unfortunately isn't included with the DJI Fly More kit, which only includes two extra batteries and a charging hub. Since this is an FPV drone, the gimbal operates only on the tilt, vertical, axis. Image stabilization, taken from the DJI Osmo Action, takes care of keeping video footage smooth. The DJI FPV Goggles V2 come with a battery that attaches to a cable and can be stored in your pocket during use. The goggles provide reliable long-distance, low-latency transmission which never once faltered during our testing. The single screen resolution of 1440 by 810 provides a beautifully clear image from the camera, too. The view is so large, though, that when reading flight information you have to look to the sides of the screen, which can be tricky. Also, changing the camera and flight settings in the goggles takes getting used to as it's not as easy as using a phone cradled on a controller. Since the drone is geared towards the DJI FPV goggles V2, the new DJI FPV controller V2 doesn't have a phone cradle for attaching a phone. This is unsurprising because you will always get the best experience from FPV drones when flown wearing goggles, as opposed to trying to view the camera feed on a phone or tablet. But it might have been a nice option for those wanting to use the DJI FPV as a traditional drone. The controller features a minimal design and large buttons that can be easily controlled by feel when flying the drone and using the goggles. You just have to memorize the button positions and six buttons, which include a customizable custom button and a dial for controlling the camera angle. The control sticks screw into the controls and can be conveniently stored in the controller handles when not in use. Unlike self or custom built FPV drones, the DJI FPV offers no real ability for owners to repair damage themselves if they happen to crash the drone. The drone must be sent to DJI for repair and even with DJI Care Refresh, crashing the FPV remains expensive when all you might need is a new motor arm, for example. DJI Care Refresh costs $199, 189 pounds, 319 Australian dollars for one year and provides up to two replacement drones in that year. The first costs an additional $259 249 pounds, 419 Australian dollars, and the second a further $279 269 pounds, 469 Australian dollars. You can, of course, purchase new propellers and replacement accessories including the camera, as well as the drone itself and controller separately, but at $739 659 pounds, 1,139 Australian dollars for just the drone, it's an expensive replacement. With crash damage a risk, purchasing DJI Care Refresh would be prudent, but this adds to the cost of the overall package. To put all of this into context, if you were to buy the FPV combo, the Fly More bundle, the DJI Goggles Carry More backpack and one year of DJI Care Refresh, the seemingly attractive cost of the FPV combo at $1,299, 1,249 pounds, 2,099 Australian dollars suddenly soars to a whopping $1,916, 1,806 pounds, 3,016 Australian dollars when you add on what can only be called essential accessories. That's only marginally less than a DJI Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 and official Phantom backpack. Traditional FPV drones are typically self-built and racing models that are much more difficult to fly, and therefore easier to crash, than consumer-level drones. In creating the FPV, DJI has used its expertise from the Mavic series to produce a drone that has flight modes that are suitable for both beginners and more experienced pilots. Normal mode is the one you will naturally start with, since this uses GPS positioning and takes advantage of the DJI FPV's front and bottom visual positioning sensors. The drone behaves much like other DJI drones in this mode and will hover in position when the controls are released. But there is one key difference between the DJI FPV and the company's other drones. While the Mavic series can automatically stop when the sensors detect an obstacle, the FPV will simply slow down and alert you to the presence of danger, you must adjust flight yourself to avoid a collision. So, even in normal mode, you still need to take a great amount of care when flying the DJI FPV. Manual mode is designed for use by more experienced FPV pilots, since it has no GPS and the collision sensors are turned off. This is so experienced FPV pilots who require the ability to perform aerial stunts and fly through tight spaces that speed can do this. This mode isn't for the inexperienced and or the faint-hearted. Even experienced standard drone pilots will have a steep learning curve with this mode. Sport mode is a hybrid of the normal and manual modes, offering some of the maneuverability of the latter with some of the safety features of the former. Just to give you a flavor of the different modes in terms of speed, manual mode is capable of up to 87 miles per hour, 
0 to 62 miles per hour in 2 seconds, sport mode can reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour, while normal mode is a much more modest 33 miles per hour. The DJI FPV isn't particularly feature packed compared to DJI's usual offerings, there are no automated flying modes, for example. And alongside the flight modes aimed at users of all levels of drone flying ability, the USP of the drone relies heavily on the FPV element and its ease of use compared to traditional FPV drones. The DJI FPV is advertised as being able to fly for up to 20 minutes, but this is at a speed of 25 miles per hour in windless conditions, so unlikely in reality. Flight time, in real terms, in our tests was around 10 minutes per battery and will always ultimately depend on conditions. But in context, this is still much better battery life than standard FPV drones. The DJI FPV features a 12MP half.3 inch CMOS sensor and the camera offers a 14.66mm equivalent lens with a 150 degree field of view and a fixed f/2.8 aperture. The fixed focus range is said to be from 0.6 meters to infinity, which means that everything in shot is in focus, and this certainly appears to be the case. There's enough here to satisfy both amateur and professional videographers. The camera is capable of shooting immersive video in 4K at 50-60fps and 1080p at 50-60-100-120fps, which provides a huge amount of cinematic and creative scope. Plus, video footage can be captured in standard and DCHIN-like color profiles at a bitrate of up to 120 megabits per second. Overall, the 4K and 1080p video is overall just what you'd expect from a DJI drone, aside from the camera capturing the front propellers at times, even when the lens correction is turned on. It makes sense to have the latter switched on, because it removes the barrel slash fisheye distortion the lens otherwise creates, but you will need to crop some aerial video and stills to remove the propellers. If you leave the lens correction off you will always have to crop. When shooting stills you can only shoot in either auto or manual modes and capture JPEGs. Shooting in RAW is not available, and neither are any automated shooting modes for either stills or video. This drone is ultimately for capturing forward-facing FPV video. One issue when shooting stills or even video in a hover is that, when there's a side wind, the drone will naturally tilt to the side to hold position. Since there's no gimbal movement on the horizontal axis, your still images will be taken at an angle, see above. This is again another difference between the DJI FPV and the Mavic series, which use their gimbals to account for this tilt and level the camera.